And you know, Advent wreaths aren't just for kids. Um, I would encourage uh, everyone to have an Advent wreath, this, especially this year, and uh, take turns lighting the candles and blowing them out. I know we used to have a calendar as to which kid, and uh, sometimes Sandy and I got to light the candles as well, so that was good. Also, I would recommend, if you can get your hands on Veggie Tales, Daniel in the Lion's Den, it's really good, and the music, especially the Darius song, is fantastic. So I'd recommend that. It's not just for kids. I am not a literary expert, but I do play one from time to time during my sermons. These days, writers seem to write in a direct style. They get right to the point. They're very economical with their words, straight line. Years ago, even back in antiquity, they would write in kind of a roundabout way. Maybe we would call it beating around the bush. But they weren't just wasting time and ink. They would circle around, building their case, and then by the time they were done, they gotcha. I think that's what the governor was doing last week. He was bringing in a bunch of experts in different uh, medical fields, uh, people who were working with COVID-19, patients, uh, working with patients on the front line. And then after it seemed to go on and on and on, he presented the new regulations. He was making his case first instead of just saying, okay, this is what we're gonna do. I like to think of this kind of writing as rich. Quite often there is not just one point to the message. There can be many points and many lessons. Daniel and the lion's den is one of those kinds of stories. It is a very rich story with lots to chew on and savor. So let's start chewing as we peel away the layers. Now, when we first start, when we read the story, and maybe when, when David was reading it, you, you, remember, you thought, wait a minute, the government told Daniel he shouldn't worship, but he didn't stop worshiping. Maybe we shouldn't stop our in-person worship. Maybe we shouldn't let the government tell us what to do. This is America, we have a religious freedom. And even if we didn't have religious freedom, maybe we shouldn't have stopped. Well, first of all, there's some very important differences between Daniel's story and our story. First of all, the government didn't shut us down. We could have kept worshiping in person if we wanted to. And actually, we're still worshiping, just virtually. We decided that there was a national health crisis with this pandemic, and we wanted to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. Plus, we wanted to protect people, our people, our neighbors, ourselves. Some of, our neighbor, uh, some of our members have died from COVID-19, not from coming to worship, but from the disease. We don't want to lose any more, not one. You are too special to us. Two, in Daniel's story, the prohibition was about stopping worship from anything divine or human besides the king. Our government isn't trying to get us to stop worshiping. They're trying to stop the spread of the virus. They're trying to keep people alive during this pandemic till we can get to that vaccine. This story is certainly, certainly has elements of faith and power. Daniel is in a position of power. He's an advisor to the king. 
Now, Judah was conquered and exiled in 586 BC, before COVID. Sorry. 586 years, 586 years before Christ. Daniel was living under foreign rule in a foreign land. How can God's people remain faithful? The gods were generally associated, thought to be associated with particular land. Each land had their own gods, so they thought. How can God's people remain faithful outside of the promised land? Even though they were exiles, Daniel and his friends were found to have gifts and abilities, and the Persians were no dummies. They used these resources, all the resources available to them, including people. Daniel was an advisor to the king. The other advisors and officials were jealous of Daniel, and they proposed a plan to get rid of him. Their plan was to get the king to sign an injunction prohibiting worship besides worshiping the king. Now, Daniel, those, those officials really didn't care about religion, but Daniel did. He cared about his faith, so he just kept practicing. He practiced peaceful, civil disobedience. In other words, he kept worshiping his God, our God, even though it was against the law. You know the story. Daniel gets thrown into the lion's den, and God works a miracle with the lions. Or the lions just didn't eat kosher. Okay, just kidding. God works a miracle, keeps the lions from eating Daniel. The miracle works not only to keep Daniel alive, but converts the king to believe in Daniel's God, Yahweh. The plot to get rid of Daniel is spoiled. The prefects, the satraps, the counselors, the governors are thrown in to the hungry lions in place of Daniel. So there's a lot going on in this story. Is it about the danger of politics? Is it about keeping your faith in the face of enemy, an enemy gover government? Is it about keeping your faith even if it might kill you? Is it about God's power over lions? Is it about worshiping God in a foreign land? It's probably all of that and more. But under it all, it's about the fact that God is there. God is Emmanuel. God is with us. For Daniel and the Judeans, it is a message of hope. They can believe and trust in God outside of the promised land because God's there too. God is with them. God is with them in that foreign land. God is not bound by any land or any situation. We are living in a foreign land right now. With all that's going on, this land is a world that is foreign to us. With COVID and sickness and death and changes in our lifestyle, this is all foreign to us. With people out of work, away from friends, family and loved ones, we're depressed and frustrated. It's partly because this is all new, this is foreign. We don't know what to do or how to feel. We are physically away from our church family and our church building, at least for worship. However, even with all of this, we can believe and trust in God because God is here. God is here in the middle of the pandemic. God who promised to always love you in baptism is here. 
During this Advent season, we can have hope because we can sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Christ has come, Christ will come again. It may not feel like Christ is with us all the time. Daniel and his people might not have thought God was with them, but God was there, and God is here. The people of Daniel's time and situation might have wondered how they could be God's people in this foreign place, under foreign rule. The lion's den showed them it's possible and to stay vigilant. Hopefully, we won't get thrown into any lion's den. But whatever, whatever happens, even in the time of COVID, time of COVID, I don't know if that's TC or CT, even now, in this time, in this place, stay vigilant, have faith, have hope, Christ walks with us. Amen.